Look, Ma, no hands. What's up, guys? This is Tampa Tech, and today we're going to be checking out the CX20 drone. Now, if you guys are interested in the Phantom 3 drone, this is basically very similar to the Phantom 3 drone, but it's a lot cheaper. So this is a great alternative. It has built-in GPS positioning, auto return, autopilot, and you can connect a gimbal to it as well. And it has these four blades, but a lot of people are switching them out for the carbon fiber blades. It just works a lot better. Let's open it up. Take it out. And I got the additional propeller blade guards. This is going to protect the blades from cracking. They're plastic, so yeah, I got the guards just in case it bumps into anything. It's smaller than I thought. It's pretty small. You can fit it in a backpack or something. This is what it looks like right here. And here's the bottom. This is where you can connect uh, your gimbal, motorized gimbal, if you wanted to. These are your antennas right here. This is your lights. And this is the GPS. So it looks like it fits in right there. And there's a little groove for the wiring. So make sure when you put this together, you keep that in mind, the wiring goes right here in the grooves. It has rubber feet. This is the camera mount. Alright, let's go ahead and plug in the battery. Hopefully we have some juice in here. They said the flight time is around 15 minutes. There we go. It's plugged in. Let's go ahead and slide that in. Comes with some tools and instructions. Here's your props. So this bag comes with a power adapter with the uh, prop guards. And this is the charging adapter for your battery pack. It plugs in right here. And it looks like it's an international one. And it has the LED letting you know it's charging and when it's fully charged. And here's the controller. Now it has important instructions before you get started. Important, please read the instruction manual carefully before operation. Before flying, you must calibrate the CX20. Step one, connect a charged battery. Okay, so you wanna plug it in. Step two, switch on the transmitter and allow it to bind. And then you wanna turn on the controller. Set these up, all the way up, and then hold that to the right, and then I'll start flashing red and yellow. That's when you start to calibrate it. Not yet. It takes a couple, maybe up to a minute. There it goes. Now it's in calibration mode. <laughs> Don't forget to um, turn it to the bottom left to disengage the motors. Step three, the red light and yellow light flashing to vertical level rotating the clock on uh, the CX20 clockwise four times. Four. Step four. Now point the CX20 down towards the ground and rotate about its roll axis another four times. Two, three, four. Step five. Calibrate after calibration, disconnect the power supply. Again, turn on the CX20. It will be ready to fly. And when you're done, you just disconnect it and then reconnect it when you're ready to fly. Please read the instruction manual for full calibration information. After landing, you must engage the electronic motor lock for safety. Move the left handle joystick to its bottom left position. When the red light flashes, the motors are locked and safe. When flying the CX-20 indoors, you must only use the takeoff and orientation modes. Do not attempt to fly this model indoors. Good. Reminds me of the 80s. That noise. So you wanna face the antenna upward. This is your trim right here. And this is your for your gimbal controls. 
there's a little chart right up here letting you know how to set these up in orientation. So at takeoff, you want to put all these switches up. It says make sure you have that set to zero. Takeoff, zero, takeoff. That's zero, and that is zero right here. So if you want a GPS hold, leave this to zero. If you want a GPS hold, leave that to one. And what that does is it, it stays um, level in midair. So you got GPS hold, you got orientation, altitude hold, and return home. So if you want to uh, have it return home, set it to zero and set this one to two and it will go straight to back to its original takeoff source. Okay, on the props, you'll notice there's an arrow right here. So you want to make sure that arrow matches the arrows on the drone. So I don't know if you can see that, but there's an arrow right here and one tells you clockwise, one tells you the counterclockwise. So this one has the arrow pointing counterclockwise. So I know this arrow goes on to this side because this arrow is pointing counterclockwise. Turn that to the left, counterclockwise to remove that screw. Push this in. It should fall into the slot. There it goes. And put this screw on. There we go. And you just want to put it on snug right here. There you go. This one is opposite. It's clockwise. So now we have to get the propeller that has a clockwise. Yeah, see that one is clockwise. Put that one there. So this, to take this one off, you turn it clockwise. And then you push this and it should fall right into the slot. Just, to, just like that. And then the tighten that screw, you have to turn it clock counterclockwise to tighten it, which is the opposite. There we go. Looks good. And you can put the guards on. I take out these short screws. I'm gonna replace them with the long screw. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put in the prop guards and they just line up in the holes right here. See those two holes? You just sit it right there in its spot and it should fit right, should fall right into the spot right there. And I'll take the antenna and just Velcro it right here. It says to use 3M tape, but this works too. So it comes with the two metal plates and the rubber spacers. I'm going to drill a hole in the center where the other um, holes are on the metal plate. And that's going to be for the camera mount and these rubber spacers just connect onto those um, black plates and see that um, that's the same size right here as a screw I'm going to use to screw into the camera and I'm using a rubber washer here so make sure you screw into the right size black plate I'm going to use a Samsung Gear 360 camera because it records in 4K and also 1280p 60 frames per second which is great for rec recording fast action and it records 360 degrees there's two 4K cameras back to back on this one camera unit and it mounts right there on see those that's the big holes they go on top with the, the drilled hole and that goes in the drilled hole And I, I didn't put one uh, spacer on yet because then I'm going to slide in the screw. Once you slide in the screw and then you put on that last rubber spacer on that black plate. So it's, then you're going to screw in right there. So you're going to use these tiny screws per, and the screwdriver provided by the drone. It comes in the box. And you want to hold it with the needle nose plier. And then you're going to twist the camera on. And you want to make sure it's snug. Don't over tighten it. Just make sure it's snug. 
you can use two rubber uh, rubber washers and then this is a little tricky to put on you just put one corner in by pinching it and then you grab it by needle nose pliers and you pull it through I wish they had extra of these in the box there we go now it's locked in so here's the other rubber washer and I'm just showing you again I'm twisting on the camera and this is optional using two rubber washers but I just it absorbs the vibration better in my opinion alright we want to make sure the drone is on a level surface before you plug in the battery then you can calibrate it So this green light is for GPS location. When it's solid, it it, that means you have good GPS signal. On the left is the red light. The red light is for the motors being disengaged and engaged. When it's solid, that means the motors are ready to go takeoff mode. Hold it like this. We're going to calibrate it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right. We're gonna make sure these switches are up. And you can have actually um, this one, both of these up for uh, takeoff mode, and then one is for uh, GPS location, that's to keep it steady. And then bottom left to in disengage the motors, and bottom right to engage the motors. So this stops it, this makes the motors go. And when you're taking off. All right, so bottom left, the motors are turned off. All right, and then bottom right, wait for that red light to be solid. And both lights are solid. Then you can let go, and it should turn on. That's bottom right again. Up, oh, take off mode. There we go. I forgot that switch. When learning how to fly this thing, it's really best to use it in a grass field where there's no trees and no houses. There we go. It does take skill to learn how to fly this thing. I crashed it a few times. And then disengage, you go bottom left. And now it'll disengage the motors. Well, you have to turn that off right there. That's how you disengage it. So guys, that's how you set up and install your Samsung Gear 360 camera to your CX-20 drone. If this video was informative, give me a big thumbs up. And if you know anyone looking to get into drones or recording with 360 cameras, click on the share button below. And if you're interested in getting the CX-20 drone or the Samsung Gear 360 camera, click on the links in the video description below. And you, if you want more tech reviews and how-to videos coming your way, Click on that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, guys.